Uh, I want to talk about um, this rugby player, uh, Lewis Rees Zamet from Wales, uh, playing rugby. And I've watched a lot of videos from people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about when it comes to football and rugby. Uh, what's my expertise? Uh, I've played football against full-grown men. Uh, I played rugby against full-grown men. I played one year professionally uh, rugby in Japan. Um, played military ball, club ball against full-grown men, against washed-out NFL players, uh, washed-out college players. Uh, so as far as like all these people who are commenting on it they're just getting everything wrong so they said he had a bad a lot of them will say well he had a bad performance he played rugby it's his first game it's uh what do you expect he didn't have a bad performance on his handoffs you can see him make the fucking right decisions you can see him slip arm tackles make the right cuts go where he was supposed to fucking go you can only go so far when there's three fucking people in front of you. Oh, he only got a yard. Well, there's three fucking people in front of him. How about the uh, wide receiver, tight ends, and offensive linemen pick up who... Nobody... There, there's an NFL running back that's going to... when You got three guys lined up in front of you. Like, <laughs> not only that, but after breaking two fucking tackles or juking two guys. Then on the kickoff, he goes down. He already beat the uh the wing blocker out there right in the race noticed the angle was off so he made the adjustment and cut back under the guy who's trying to block him on the punt he goes down he does the perfect settle down which is what he's supposed to do the guy made a good juke move which was kind of like a back juke and uh, Zamet got an arm on him and still made the fucking tackle. Like, oh, that was a shitty fucking tackle. Uh, tackling on a kickoff on a guy like one on one like that—that's fucking difficult to do for anybody. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, especially a returner when that's their job. Like, that's their fucking. That's really the only thing they do. Rarely do you have a starter and they're like that's their their uh, expertise in kick returns. They'll they'll do that all fucking day. Okay, and then he goes, and they're like, look, see, he can't block. Uh, t there might be 10 running backs in the NFL who could actually fucking block a, a defensive tackle, defensive end, outside linebacker that outweighs him by uh, 40 to uh, sometimes 100 fucking pounds. So don't give me any fucking bullshit. He obviously can't block. It's like, uh, show me a fucking running back who can. There's like 10 of them in the entire fucking league. Running, and don't tell me, don't, don't include any fullbacks or tight end fullbacks. Okay? So you could get a little butt hurt about that all you want. Like, you're going to be saying the same thing if you have any sort of, um, uh, you know, moral or, uh, non-biased fucking view about it okay and i know what some of you are saying oh well you're just a rugby simp or whatever these guys that uh no i just understand how it works and how uh, you can translate rugby players to the nfl and vice versa by understanding both sports and utilizing the skills and placing them in the proper fucking positions it's that fucking easy jordan mylotta should be playing defensive end, tight end. Instead, they fattened it up and made him a fucking lineman. That guy should be, uh, they should have kept him around 280 pounds, running at the speed he runs at, and playing tight end or defensive end at 300 pounds. Now he's like 340 fucking pounds or some shit like that. And they made him an offensive lineman. Now he's turned into a good offensive lineman, but he would have hit hard already if he, they would have kept him at we're talking about rugby players, right? Guys who tackle without pads. Put him at defensive end or tight end if he wanted to get into offense and utilize his athleticism and size and strength and speed. Imagine a guy 280, 290 pounds running a 4'9", fucking 40, a sub 5. <laughs> just running guys over. They're, those guys don't exist anymore. Where are the brutes that just run everybody over? They don't exist anymore.
there's no Mike Allstotts. And don't give me fucking, um, uh, the, uh, what's his name from Titans or whatever. It, that's not the same. There's no Jerome Bettis. <laughs> no Max Strong. None of those guys. Where, where the fuck are those guys? Where's the fucking fridge on the short? Where'd those guys go? Where are those guys? The football doesn't have it. Well, at any now you have the way you have these light offensives and like speed and all that stuff, I, and the way they build defenses around these uh, these offenses now, an animal fullback could easily create havoc and uh, put up some fucking numbers if you gave him a chance. Uh, Jusic. He's a perfect example, and he's not even a big bruiser type, but that guy, it works. But so many teams are just like, we don't need a fullback. At the fullback, the teams that do use these fullbacks are the Baltimore Ravens, for example. It's working, and they need to get them more involved. Anyways, that was a little bit off, but let's go back to Zanet. He'll be just fine if the NFL doesn't keep acting like a bunch of dumbasses when it comes to rugby because quite frankly they don't fucking understand rugby now they're in the nfl so like there's no time to understand rugby what they need to do is get people who actually have played football at a higher fucking level not only that but played rugby at a higher fucking level to bridge that gap and be knowledge or an extra coach a liaison if you will uh, because there's talent that could go both ways and a lot of these guys are like oh i don't it's just too difficult for nfl players you know who get washed out and they're still young or whatever to like didn't you know take that pay cut and to play rugby or whatever and honestly in my opinion most of the guys don't do that because they play without pads so let's just keep that real because i've actually tried to recruit former nfl players and college fucking players to play rugby coming across them in the gyms um out and about uh there was a guy at uh, oktoberfest i recognized him he was a former nfl player i was like what are you doing you know I, nobody else recognized him i caught him i was like hey you should come and play some rugby without pads so let's keep that fucking real okay i'm not bullshitting the amount of fucking big ass tough guy fucking football players who cringe at the thought of playing a contact sport without pads and a helmet it's ridiculous it's fucking ridiculous or too much running so let's keep that fucking real okay uh, it's like uh, what's that one guy uh, guy from Australia that uh, like a few years ago was San Francisco San Francisco fucked it up because they didn't know how to use the guy. He was obviously the best fucking runner they had on the team at that time. But they couldn't, they just didn't know how to, they didn't even want to work on, like, you know, helping him for a couple of years. But they'll get that new fucking rookie in because the new rookies are somehow, somehow all these fucking rookies are just so much more talented and bigger and stronger and faster than guys who've been in the league and in professional programs learning professional playbooks and um there's there isn't anybody who could tell me that a 20 year old 21 22 year old is better than your average fucking nfl player and so what happens you have these veterans who've been in the league for five years who should be starting for a different team but sometimes they get stuck on a team well now you have these new rookies because that's the new thing it's all about getting the fucking rookies because then you don't have to pay them right you don't have to pay them and you have them on contract from two to four years or whatever the fuck it is and so they play them and they wash out people who are actually better than these fucking rookies but there's so much pressure and part of it's us stupid fucking fans right and uh most fans are fucking stupid uh, that are like, oh, okay, why aren't they playing the new rookie? So then these people's like, well, we got to play the new rookie because the fans say so. Uh, it's stupid. There's no reason why a 21-year-old anybody... Sure, there's going to be a few. But honestly, okay, 
if you're a first rounder, you're probably going to end up starting somewhere. That makes sense. Maybe a second rounder. But, like, teams will start third, fourth, and fifth rounders, and just, like, there's just a bevy of, and it's just, like, you have these veterans who are, like, why is this fucking rookie starting? He's not better than me. He's not faster than me. He's not bigger than me. He barely knows the fucking playbook. Got to play him, though. And that's why every year there's a quarterback carousel because there's 10 quarterbacks every year who could play in the NFL. And when we realize two, three years later, it's like, oh, God, where did all them fucking quarterbacks go? Where did all them running backs go and all them awesome linemen? They get washed in the middle of the system because guess what? There's a whole new rookie class every fucking year of brand new cars. And they just, it's just a shit fucking system. So it washes out all these veterans who still should be playing in the league. And they don't get to play in the league. And then they don't have anywhere else to go to drop down to maybe make their way back. Because the NFL doesn't, isn't about competition. It's about money and revenue. And they make a ton of fucking money bringing in rookies and having the whole rookie show every goddamn year. It's, it's annoying. It's annoying that there isn't a minor league system of some sort or semi-pro system related to the NFL where NFL can draw talent either from people out of high school who are playing uh, or people you know coming out of college who didn't make pro or people who got washed out of pros it works everywhere else with like soccer the way their systems go yeah people go to college and play and then they get out and play professional or go into like uh, the leagues over there the way their tiered systems are and then you have people out of high school who play pro or uh, will play through the system for four or five years and they get their big shot at 26 27 and then the competition is better some of the best players aren't even playing in the nfl that's the funny fucking part and running backs running backs are dime a dozen yet it's the fucking running back position that's Well, you could put any uh, you could put any player back there now. It's like, no, you can't. First, you have to have an offensive line, which so many NFL teams don't fucking get. Pete Carroll was one of those guys. It was fucking annoying. Like, do they re like? Uh, it's just amazing how people in the NFL get to the NFL and not realize that the entire offense and the entire defense starts at the line of scrimmage. This is football 101. These, how are these people in fucking... I've seen countless, countless college high school teams dominate with shitty fucking quarterbacks and running backs and because only because their fucking offensive line are monsters and just make room. And yeah, you can just put any fucking running back in it, but it isn't the same thing in... NFL. The way the NFL works is there's like six teams with good offensive linemen because they're the only ones who understand you need a good offensive line. So what do they do? They snag up all the good offensive line that there is. And then you have like five, six teams who consistently have the best offensive line. And everybody knows it because that's what is said by everybody. These people have offensive lines. And then you look and it's like, how are they making the playoffs and their quarterback is one of the worst fucking quarterbacks you got like you know, like Ryan fucking Tannehill. But you know what they had? They had a monster running back and a good offensive line. And so they put up a ton of fucking uh, yards. With just an offensive line. They had shitty fucking wide receivers, shitty quarterback, no fullback. And it was just... What's his name? I can't believe I can't remember his name. He's a beast. He's an animal. He's awesome. But him and an offensive line, and that carried the team. That carried the team over a mediocre fucking defense with the Tennessee Titans. Now, nothing came of it, but, like, that's just a fucking example. Or the Dallas Cowboys putting up all them numbers with a crappy fucking quarterback their offensive line and now that their offensive line is not as good these last couple of years you can really see that like <laughs> they aren't getting any sure they're getting the you know 
the wins in, in season, but anyways. I guess back to rugby. Um, I mean, what more can I say? It's just the same old, same old. Oh, we tried this rugby player. It just didn't work out. It just didn't translate. Lee. Running back should be the easiest on the field. And, like, people are like, well, just make him a wide receiver because of his body build. It's like, I don't, that's just someone saying that because they don't know rugby and skills and if they actually understood football, they would know that it, that's a dumb decision. Like that's just a quick decision to make based on his his body shape. Um, he could be a good running back. I'm not saying the best or whatever, but he's got just in those videos. Even though he only got like two yards, you could see that he knows how to run the fucking ball, and that's what these. Dorks on fucking YouTube don't understand. Like, he did bad. I'm like, no, he didn't. Look, first run, they show, right? In the video, we've all seen it, anybody who's been following this. He makes a perfect step to run through a gap, breaks an arm tackle, makes another cut because there's a wall there to get to space and gaps. You gotta remember, these rugby players, their whole game, running game is gaps. Okay? Without blockers so he's gonna see and understand gaps better than anybody that's what they've been fucking doing since they were kids over there and playing rugby i didn't realize how good that make me better when i went back and started playing rugby after playing football now it was like the gaps i could see the gaps in the walls just flowing because you have to do it without blockers so you learn it's like it's it's like expedient fucking learning, cramming 10 years of football experience and a couple years of rugby just from the way you learn to run the ball in rugby. Now all he has to do is learn how to read the blocks. And once he does that, <sighs> I don't think these NFL fans get it because uh, most of them don't understand rugby so and they just want to talk about it because like what they watch, watch a couple rugby games and maybe understand the basic rules of it and they're just like oh this is not going to work out it's like what the fuck do you know nothing nothing and he will probably not work out because the NFL doesn't know what the fuck they're doing <laughs> they barely know what they're doing at the professional level this is how you get people like fucking Urban Meyer was that his name? The guy just totally fucked up. The it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that there's guys and co coaches in college football that should be uh, coaching in the NFL, and you have idiots in the NFL that shouldn't even be fucking coaching high school. It's it's just uh, and that it's true. The NFL is the not for long league, and it shouldn't be like that because there should be programs. There's no reason, you can't tell me these fucking 21-year-olds are better than these 25-year-olds who are, and even older, who are in their prime physical condition, who are bigger, stronger, and faster than, you know those guys coming out of college has to get bigger and stronger and faster. Some of them have to lose weight because they're a little bit fucking portly or soft or squishy, right? Look at all the quarterbacks that are all skinny and lanky in fucking college, and then they get in the NFL, and they, over two, three years... They, had, they put on 10, 15 pounds. Or the running backs are a little too small. They, they're like 180 pounds. They get them up to 190, 195 pounds. Undersized linemen. Uh, we're going to add 15 pounds on you. Oh, now you are you can bench 100 pounds more your third, fourth year in the fucking pro. Like, you know when I'm squatting, uh, there's no... Not only that, but they have NFL playbook knowledge, system work knowledge. They have five years of reading professional offenses, not college fucking where half of it's uh, trick plays and gimmicks and shit like that that don't translate to NFL. You can run option football all day in fucking in in college. The Navy gives good teams fits, even though Navy usually loses, but. Navy fucking uh, triple option football gives 
really good teams fits on defense. Now, Navy defense can't stop anything, so it's just it's just uh, you know demoralizing. <laughs> but like so, you get in the NFL. There's one team that can run the option well, and that's uh, because they have a running back as a quarterback who still hasn't done anything in the playoffs. He's got two MVPs. It's just... He falls apart in the playoffs. I, I don't get it. You have that much talent on that team. And an MVP quarterback. And you just don't go anywhere. But we've seen that time and time again. And you also see quarterbacks who can actually throw and run get pigeonholed as just a running quarterback is like no this guy can actually fucking throw the ball that happened to Russell Wilson it's like uh, have you seen the guy throw the ball it's like holy shit and then of course what is it 15 years later it's like oh yeah he's he was really that good and then they threw him on of course all the stuff with Seattle they threw him on a shitty fucking Broncos team and look what happened zero offensive line worse offensive line than what we had with Seattle after uh, the Marshawn years when we actually had a good offensive line and it's not even necessarily that they were good is that they were all just animals they're just big strong guys that could push people off the ball it doesn't even really mean they were that good technically good because they really weren't technically good like they were maulers there was a lot of penalties after the fact with those guys with Giacomini and fucking Sweezy those two guys on the right side those guys were just fucking just punishing people I mean was it Sweezy or Giacomini who he took some he took some like all pro defensive tackle and just like lifted him up and fucking shoved him into the fucking ground like he was a a little kid and this guy was bigger than Giacomini I think it was it was either that or Sweezy did it just that was when we had Max Unger too so anyways if the Chiefs just spend the time and effort and quite frankly money on Reese he'll be productive for them and actually make it as a an NFL player so there won't be all these fucking idiots who think that somehow rugby players aren't as good athletes or they're not smart enough to uh, get in the uh, NFL system or they're not um, or somehow that makes the NFL tougher because uh, quite frankly as someone who's played against like I said washed out NFL players and college players and uh I played in the military leagues against guys who are washouts of college football. And so there was a guy on uh, the best team in the league who played NFL football and like 30, no, well, this would have been. So he was like 38 playing middle linebacker. The guy was fucking big. Um, so he, I would have been 21. So he played in the fucking 80s. And then he got washed out, became a grunt in the Marine Corps. So, I don't want to listen to all these fucking high school fucking football players who never even played rugby or did any other sports beyond high school be like, it's just not going to work out. Trying to like, like they know what the fuck they're talking about. Uh, like, playing with and against and understanding, like, I never mind the fact that I've coached football. I've coached rugby. It's just it's just annoying to see people really on both sides not understanding each other's sports and then have to saying stuff when they don't fucking understand what the fuck they're talking about. That's what bugs me. People who are going to be naturally inquisitive, those are the people that I want to talk to. Be like, well, this is kind of how blah, 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 and this is how this position can change over. Uh, this is how this position in rugby relates to this position in football. They don't do that. They don't say... They're just like, look at someone's body size and be like, um, okay, you're this. It's just like, well, that's not how it fucking works in rugby. Because on one team, you could have a wing out there 
which would basically be like your wide receiver, your sideline wide receiver, your one, uh, is the same as a wing. And they'll have a guy out there who's 5'7", 180 pounds. And then on the other side, they'll have a wing that's 6'4", 265 pounds. And he can run. Like, you'll see guys like the hooker position. The hooker position, um, which is basically your center in football. Centers in football are usually undersized compared to your guards and tackles. Centers in rugby are generally undersized compared to your um, your uh, your props, which is basically your guards. Your second row is going to be your tackles, and even then, they're built like that too, the same way, pretty much. Um, And so your center is going to be shorter and squattier and a little bit more mobile than the other. And it's the same thing in rugby. But they would make that guy like a fullback in the NFL or fucking... They would do something where it didn't equate to it. That's just an example. Or they would take an eight-man in rugby and make him an offensive tackle and not a tight end. An eight man is the big guy who can fucking run the ball. Run the ball. Nah, you're gonna be. A, we're gonna make you an offensive lineman. No, you're gonna make that guy a tight end. Teach him to catch, and block. And if it doesn't work out, then stick him on the end and be like, uh, "All you gotta do is fucking tackle the guy with the ball. That's it. Rush him every time. A guy that big, that strong, that fast, coming from rugby." A sport where you go in and tackle people without fucking pads. You think some guy with pads is going to fucking... Like, oh, but what about all the skills and all that stuff? You know, you need the hand fighting skills. Then put him in the hand fighting class. Like, you can do it. If the raw physical talent's there. If you're going to do that with people who play college football and are dumb shits. And you know can't learn plays and all that but you just like well he's a physical specimen so we're just going to put him in and just see what he could do and he'll learn as we go and, and then you can do that with a, a an animal at fucking uh you know in rugby there's guys in rugby a lot of things something that uh a lot of football fans don't understand is that rugby players tackle rugby players rugby players don't tackle quarterbacks wide receivers, and fucking running backs. Rugby players tackle rugby players. If you're five foot nine, 195, 200 pounds, like I was, or well, get up to 220 sometimes, um, I'm tackling a guy who's 100 pounds plus more than me at running the ball at full speed. You don't think that's gonna translate to some little running back? You think a big 280 pound rugby player is scared of a little running back? Like, <laughs> like there are guys playing in the NFL who are scared to tackle a big running back or a big wide receiver or a big uh, tight end. That won't happen with rugby players because we've tackled 300 pound guys running the fucking ball at you at full speed. Like, it's just, it's just, it's just lack of knowledge. And then, but the most annoying part is people who don't understand, they, they think they understand football and they may get it at the base level, but they don't understand the, the depths of football. And then they completely lack any knowledge of fucking rugby. And it's fucking annoying. Well, we shouldn't uh, get, uh, it's just not going to work for, you know, NFL players you know, to transfer over to rugby, uh, because, you know, pain, it's like, well, you know, if rugby was treated like we do football and we could have both, it could be, they could be leagues that assist each other and make up like, America is so fucking the U S the U S is so close to just dominating rugby on the global scale. And America is not taking the step it needs to take. 
I keep saying, there's the old adage, once America gets into the soccer, it, that's it for the rest of the world. Well, it, women's soccer, and it's way more popular women's soccer than men's soccer here. It's always been like that. Why? Because we have something called football. Not only that, but we have rugby too. We've had rugby. The team I used to play for was around since the 70s. Out of Tacoma, Washington. And it was birthed out of all these guys from all over the U.S. who played rugby but were now stationed at uh, Fort Lewis, right outside of Tacoma. So they call them the nomads because guys would come in and go. Every year there's just new guys, new army guys. Oh, yeah, I played back here. I played there. My dad played back in the... Uh, Back in the 70s, back in the 60s. Uh, my dad was from England. He played when he was, you know, shit like that. Uh, ran into all that shit. But we don't invest in, you know, the money. We don't have a high school program. It's all club still, you know. If, if like, most of these football players... In fact, all these football players, if they wanted to be the best football players, they should be playing rugby in the spring. It's the, the amount, after my first year of playing rugby and then going back to football, it was like something fucking unlocked. Not only a new animal unlocked, because I was always the guy who could make, uh, led the team tackles three years in a row. But I was always the guy who was just quiet, never made a fuss about it. I just was just there to make the fucking tackle, right? And so that was my my character but then i played rugby and i took that to the rugby pitch and i just fucking dominated and there was like a whole new animal that came then after like and it really happened because i basically tackled a guy that was like 100 pounds and it just completely just leveled him right and i was like oh shit i could actually really fucking hit big dudes and then after that i got in the marine corps so that was a whole nother beast of just primal rage I was like fuck I'm gonna fuck people up and I didn't give a shit how big they were I was gonna fuck them up that you need guys like that in the NFL there's so many guys in the NFL who can't fucking tackle who don't know how to tackle how do you make it to the NFL and you don't know how to fucking tackle it is ridiculous so fucking ridiculous hey you know what team brought in a rugby Player to teach them how to tackle and what was it 2010 and then 2013 to 15 they were the best defense one of the best defenses ever arguably oh that was right that was the Seattle Seahawks and since then I have yet to see a fucking defense be that good and tackle that fucking good what happened when the the rugby coach left and uh, I think it was in 2014. Well, in about 2015, you start seeing all these talented people who on the Seahawks who used to be able to fucking tackle, like Earl Thomas, all of a sudden whiff on tackles and then the tackling with lower. And it's like, gee, I wonder if the NFL still hasn't figured out how to teach people proper fucking tackling. That's why you have shoulder tackles and then running backs bouncing for fucking going off on 100 yard gains when they could have just had a fucking tackle if they just tackled the guy instead of shoulder bumping every fucking guy the amount of fucking idiots in the NFL who shoulder tackle what are you fucking doing it's you're one you're gonna break your shoulder doing that two you're not gonna make a tackle you can't bowl over every fucking guy just by a shoulder tackle but get fucking real and they still do it because they were taught that in high school, and they were taught that in college, and then the NFL still allows it, and the NFL can't figure out why there are so many fucking injuries because they play the game without teaching people how to properly tackle, um, how to properly brace for hits. Uh, it's just, it's ridiculous. And rugby is so much farther ahead when it comes to tackling and technique, fundamentals and stuff like that. Why? Because the system goes from the top all the way to the bottom, and it's consistent. There's continuity there. There isn't a bunch of fucking different rules and regulations. Every I'm sure, there's some little nuances, but like, it's just it's just crazy. 
And so, I mean, I've been rambling. It's just, it's just so annoying to see people who not understand stuff talk about shit that they don't understand. It's dumb. Because that guy has the talent to be in the NFL. It's whether the NFL has the talent to recognize that. And the NFL doesn't. They still don't. That's how they couldn't figure out how the Dallas Cowboys couldn't figure out how to use uh, Jonah fucking Lamu. Yeah. Did you know that? They're like, this guy's an animal. This guy's running all over all our fucking NFL players. Uh, but we can't use him. What? What? You, you kidding me, Joe Nalamu? A guy running like a 10 flat and he's 6'4", 265 fucking pounds, 6'3 three and 3 quarters, something like that. You couldn't figure out how to use that guy? Please. He was the size of fucking... He was a little bit taller Christian Okoye. He was a little taller, leaner. Christian Coy was a little more compact, but the same fucking results. Like, sh <laughs> So if any, for some reason, like, it would even happen. If any fucking NFL teams, please. If you want someone who can help you find this talent in the fucking rugby world and bring them over... Call me up. Get a hold of fucking me. And I will find guys for you who can play. And then, if you want better football players, start investing money in high school and little league rugby as well as little league football. And you will see your football NFL players in 20 fucking years be better, well-rounded athletes with more diverse skills, better tacklers, uh, better, even better runners. Like, and it'll be worth it. You'll have an even better fucking product. Not only that, but you guys, the NFL, could be a part of making the U.S., a global rugby team power that it should be with the amount of athletic talent we have here. Like, it, it's it's beyond me. That will, not only that, but that will help the NFL grow in other countries because you want to expand. You could have a legit NFL Europe where there's a European champion and a U.S. champion. And that's the fucking World Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. And there will be American players playing in Europe. And European players playing in America. And then you have a massive draft. And then you could make leagues and tier system to where... Guess what? If the fucking... Um, whoever the shittiest team in the fucking division is. And generally consistently shitty. Um they get relegated to a low